An Iraq elite military unit which has received training and support from the US has allegedly been filmed carrying out an extrajudicial killing in the city of Mosul. Please be aware you may find some of the images coming up highly disturbing. <laughs> I am proud of those mistakes. A correspondent with Gazdi have managed to talk to the man who claims to have captured those images. His name's Ali Arkadi. He says now he's been forced into hiding after exposing a series of alleged human rights abuses by the Iraqi military. I understand the dark background is intended to conceal where you are. How serious is the threat to your life after you made these uh, revelations about all this torture and wrongdoing in Iraq. My family received many threats from the ERD, especially from Captain Omar Nazar. He wrote to my father on Facebook. He said they would come in the night and kill them. They couldn't contact me because I was in hiding. But of course, I understand that my life is in danger. You spent a lot of time embedded with Iraqi forces, and uh, I know I spent some time in Mosul. I know how hard it was to, to, you know, get in touch and embed yourself with Iraqi forces, and especially difficult to gain their trust. But what was your position within the emergency response division? We worked together every day. We all slept together. I spent more time with them than with my family. I thought they were heroes. They were so brave, fighting on the front lines every day. But then I saw the other side, the torture, the raping, the killing. First, they didn't want me to film the torture and other bad stuff. But eventually, they relented and gave me permission. How did you feel when you first witnessed these torture scenes? And how did you feel as time went on and as they got more brutal and violent and fatal? At first, it didn't register. During the second week, I went home and my relatives asked me what was wrong with me. After that, it all changed. It affected me, my psychology. I kept thinking about the torture, all those people and their suffering. It got worse and worse, and after five weeks, it became so horrible that I decided to publish everything. <laughs> It was unbearable, but I made myself continue to film because I knew it was important. They tortured people and killed them, over and over. As I remember, it happened on December 12th. Captain Omar Nazar and Sergeant Haider came back and started to show us a video. We saw how Sergeant Haider started to shoot. He shot a man six, nine times. Then we heard the voice of Captain Omar. Haider, stop, that's enough. I want to talk to him. Then he shot the man three times himself. Ali's revelations are the kind that spark international scandals. And, of course, we reached out to dozens of human rights groups for comment and were largely met with silence. Of the 30 organizations we contacted, a mere three responded. I think there is a very one-sided um, level of kind of reporting going on. I think there has been very little report about um, the, the amount of um, destruction and killing going on in Mosul. A lack of neutrality of the media when it comes to reporting on, um, you know, various different campaigns. It shows when the West is involved in a campaign, there's less critical analysis of the situation. When the world learned of what was happening in Abu Ghraib more than a decade ago, the United States was ashamed. There were investigations, inquiries and disciplinary action, public interest. But that was then. We have already shifted from attrition tactics where we shove them from one position to another in Iraq and Syria to annihilation tactics where we surround them. Our intention is that the foreign fighters do not survive the fight to return home. What about civilian casualties as a result of this faster tempo? Uh, civilian casualties are a fact of life in this sort of uh, situation. There is no more shame, and that's that. Ironic, though, to beat a monster like ISIS, the good guys have turned into monsters no less. Morad Gazdiev, 
আছি